Yeah, hey, what's up? I'm Hootie. Oh, uh, last name? Blowfish. Am I real? Is this still Fleetwood Mac? Wow, guys, cool band name. One of the biggest albums of all time. Is that a third sort of Fleetwood Mac? Are you real? Hootie A.T. Blowfish? The only logical explanation here is that we're living in a simulation. Seriously? I am not making this up. Is any of this real? In 2003, Nick Bostrom published an article in the Philosophical Quarterly titled, Are We Living in a Computer Simulation? Where he proposes that we're almost certainly living in a simulation. He uses all kinds of complicated logic and philosophical reasoning to reach that conclusion, but today I'm going to present much simpler evidence. Fleetwood Mac. You'll see why I'm putting that in air quotes in a minute. Do you know how crazy Fleetwood Mac's history is? It doesn't make sense. There are little glitches all throughout the band, multiple definitions of what Fleetwood Mac is, and their most famous album is perplexing for a whole bunch of reasons. Today I'm going to use Fleetwood Mac to prove to you we're living in a simulation. The idea that we might be living in a computer simulation has been around for a while and most recently popularized by the likes of Elon Musk and Neil deGrasse Tyson, who've also concluded that we're probably living in a simulation. Their reasoning is that computer simulations now have gotten so good, in the future they would be indistinguishable from reality, so really, there's no way to know if we aren't living in a simulation. Other people will point to things like the fact that the only known life in the universe is here on Earth and the rest of this gigantic universe is empty. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Most of the universe is basically unrendered, but somehow Earth is able to sustain plants, animals, humans, and two Fleetwood Macs? Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's talk about the original Fleetwood Mac and what it means to be a band. In 1967, drummer Mick Fleetwood, guitarist Peter Green, and guitarist Jeremy Spencer formed a band called Peter Green's Fleetwood Mac. Then they added bassist John McVie for their debut album, Fleetwood Mac. Okay, stop, pause. Sorry, already this is confusing. Mick Fleetwood is in a band with Peter Green called Peter Green's Fleetwood Mac? And their album is just called Fleetwood Mac? That's like, oh man, have you heard the new album by Paul Simon's Garfunkel Fart? Yeah, the album, Garfunkel Fart, honestly, so good. What about Jeremy Spencer? John McVie? How come they don't get their names in this crazy long band name? John McVie was added right before the album, so I get that, but Jeremy Spencer's gotta be off to the side like, wow guys, cool band name. Sorry, moving on. Bring up the graphic thing again. Just keep going. In 1968, Danny Kerwin joins the band on guitar because we really need three guitarists. In 1970, Christine Perfect marries John McVie, becoming Christine McVie and the band's keyboardist. Pretty cool way to lock in a gig. In the early 70s, all three guitar players go, wait, why are we all here? They all leave, and the band simplifies the name to just Fleetwood Mac. Guitarists Bob Welch and Bob Weston join the band. It's just a band of Bobs. Plus Dave Walker on vocals now. By 1974 though, both Bobs and Dave are gone. Now this begs the question, is Fleetwood Mac still Fleetwood Mac at this point? By 1974, the only original members left are Mick Fleetwood and John McVie, but technically John McVie is only kind of an original member. They formed Peter Green's Fleetwood Mac without him and then added him for their first album. Tell you what, I'll give him half credit. So we're at 1.5 original band members for Fleetwood Mac, formerly known as Peter Green's Fleetwood Mac. Is this still Fleetwood Mac? I would warn you that we're about to take a hard left, but if you've seen my videos before, you know it'll all make sense in a minute. And besides, we're already talking about simulation hypothesis. The only way out is through. There's a classic thought experiment in Greek philosophy that's called the ship of Theseus. Here's a brief summary. Theseus sails his ship out into the sea, but while he's out there, some planks begin to crack and rot, so they replace them with new planks. They're out to sea for a long time, and eventually, all the planks get replaced. The question then is, when the ship returns from its voyage with all the original planks replaced, is it still the ship of Theseus? If not, at what point is it no longer the same ship? This problem is not unique to Fleetwood Mac. The Temptations have had over 20 members with Otis Williams as their only remaining original member. If you go see the Beach Boys or Guns N' Roses live, you're seeing the original singer and then a new band around them. Or in the case of Leonard Skinner, just the original guitarist. So at what point is a band actually not that band anymore? At what point are they basically a tribute band? And then you've got the case of Vincent Furnier, the singer for a band called Alice Cooper, who after the band's breakup in 1975, legally changed his name to Alice Cooper and just kept performing with new musicians. That's like pointing to a single plank on the ship and being like, that, that's the ship of Theseus. All these other planks, I don't know what they're doing. That's the, that's the one. That's like saying, yeah, hey, what's up, I'm Hootie. Uh, last name? Blowfish. Hootie A.T. Blowfish? On the opposite side, we have Blue Man Group, which is a collection of over 65 musicians who perform all over the world simultaneously in groups of three, painting themselves blue, going crazy in the plumbing section of Home Depot, and looking creepy as hell in the process. Who's the original Blue Man? In their case, that's the point. 
Now I get why Crosby, Stills, and Nash are called that. Look, it's either all of us performing together or it's none of us. Well, yeah, I mean, if Neil Young wants to join, we'll just add his name to the end. Actually, Hall & Oates did the same thing, except they're not actually called Hall & Oates. The name of the group is Daryl Hall and John Oates, but most people think they're called Hall & Oates. Now we're getting into the Mandela effect, which is further proof that this is a simulation. Anyway, going back to Fleetwood Mac, keep in mind with all the band members who've come and gone, they still haven't added their two most famous members or released their biggest album. As if this all wasn't confusing enough, in 1974 we have a new contender in the ring, Fake Fleetwood Mac. At the end of 1973, midway through a world tour, Fleetwood Mac decided they were breaking up, but the band's manager, Clifford Davis, was having none of it. He didn't want to destroy his reputation with concert promoters, so he just went ahead with the tour anyway with a completely different band. That's right, in 1974, there was another Fleetwood Mac. Davis claimed he owned the name, so he recruited some band members and started touring them as Fleetwood Mac. Seriously? I am not making this up. Davis told Rolling Stone in 1974, I want to get this out of the public's mind as far as the band being Mick Fleetwood's band. This band is my band. This band has always been my band. Trying to claim that Fleetwood Mac isn't Mick Fleetwood's band is like trying to claim that Garfunkel Fart isn't Art Garfunkel's band. Davis continues to argue in the article that he's been the band's manager since the very beginning, even longer than John McVie, so technically Mick Fleetwood is the only plank left in the ship other than himself. He said that Mick Fleetwood was supposed to be the drummer for the tour with all the other new members, but he had to drop out last minute, so they had to replace him. Of course, Mick Fleetwood said he never agreed to this tour. This band, essentially a Fleetwood Mac tribute band, was told that the other real members of the band would be joining them on later dates, which of course was not true. They performed several shows on their own to a variety of audience reactions before the inevitable lawsuit, which returned the name of the band to Mick Fleetwood. Interestingly, some of the members of fake Fleetwood Mac ended up playing in former real member Danny Kerwin's band, which begs the question, is that a third sort of Fleetwood Mac? After the dust of fake Fleetwood Mac settled and the previous iteration of the band split up, we're left with 1.5 original Fleetwood Mac members. So is this still the ship of Fleetwood Mac? The crazy thing is, all of this still happened before they made one of the greatest albums of all time with two other band members. Right, so at the end of 1974, after all the drama we just went through, Mick Fleetwood meets Lindsey Buckingham and asks him to join the band. He agrees as long as his girlfriend and music partner, Stevie Nicks, can join. This marks the second time in Fleetwood Mac history that someone joined by being in a relationship with another band member. The Ship of Theseus is a good thought experiment for this band, but interestingly, this isn't a problem with sports teams. The roster of players changes from season to season, and they're still the same team. But there's only one 96 Bulls. And this iteration of Fleetwood Mac is their 96 Bulls season. Their next album together is a big hit, but the one after that, Rumors, is one of the biggest albums of all time. The crazy thing is, at this point, their old manager is kind of right. The band is down to one original member, 1.5, and this is Fleetwood Mac's 11th studio album. This album is undeniably great. It's the eighth best-selling album of all time, and Rolling Stone ranked it in 2020 as the seventh greatest album of all time. Fleetwood Mac has had a lot of different configurations since, with members leaving and coming back, and then in 2020, what happens? The song Dreams from the album Rumors charts again all over the world thanks to TikTok, peaking at number 12 on the Billboard Hot 100. Which brings us back to the question, are we living in a simulation? Common arguments that we're living in a simulation are things like funny glitches, doubles of things, or the fact that we haven't found extraterrestrial life. It's just rocks, stars, and gas out there no life. But somehow on Earth we're able to sustain life and it's the only known place in the universe that can do that. Well, I'd like to add to that argument the insane history of Fleetwood Mac, both of them, kinda three Fleetwood Macs? And their best album, Rumors, is a classic which is their 11th studio album with a completely different set of musicians than they originally started with, and 43 years after its initial release, Dreams is charting again. The only logical explanation here is that we're living in a simulation. And ultimately, it doesn't really matter. Simulation or not, Rumors still slaps. For more videos, check out the rest of my channel. And hey, drop a comment and say what's up. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Oh, what about ABBA? In 2022, they announced ABBA Voyage, which is a hologram concert tour featuring digital avatars of each band member, even though they're all still alive. This is next level. That's like the spaceship of Theseus. That one. That's the plank. That, <laughs> that's like being like, hey man, yeah, what's up? Hootie. Hey, yeah, what's up? My name's Hootie. Hey, what's up? I'm Hootie. Oh yeah, last name Blowfish.
Trying to claim that Fleetwood Mac isn't Mick Fleetwood's band is like trying to claim Garfunkel Fart isn't our 